Hi everyone. Everybody from yesterday evening has been talking about exit polls. Um, and people are talking about it, calling people, wanting to understand the numbers itself. Right now, I'm at Edina. Edina is a community media house in Bangalore. And we are sitting with two people who are part of the Edina research team, Dr. Vasu and Bharat. They have both come down here to discuss about why they think they're going to challenge the exit polls because of their own work and their own understanding of how exit polls are done. So we're going to discuss with them what do they mean by the whole idea of challenging the exit poll itself. So I'll come to you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, what do you mean by challenging an exit poll? Now, as uh, you can see, not just one exit poll, but almost all the exit polls have similar numbers this time. It is somewhere between 370 to 400 for NDA. And uh, of course, it is uh, not in our framework to question the entire exit poll at all India level, but uh, all of them or most of them have also given their predictions for Karnataka. And we have done our survey, pre-poll survey, during election we did survey and then we also conducted a post-poll survey. And we have also seen the numbers, uh, not just uh, the seat predictions, but the vote share prediction for Congress and JDS BJP alliance in Karnataka. And we have also seen the methodology and other demographic things in one particular uh, exit poll. With this, we are sure that these exit polls are wrong and uh, of course, most of the exit polls do not give us the data like what was the sample size, what was the methodology involved and what was the demography and how was the representation in the sampling, they do not give. But my axis has given this and we are sure that from Karnataka perspective, it is wrong. We are saying this based on our data, pre-poll survey survey done during election and survey after election. So this is why we are challenging that no, this exit poll cannot be true. Uh, now that Edina is wanting to challenge this, and I can see that your challenge is really coming from really understanding the Karnataka data. And you can see that some of the exit polls do not represent Karnataka well. So let us go step by step. Could you explain to the audience, what do you mean by challenging an exit poll technically? Are their sample size wrong? Are the sa sampling methodology wrong? What is the concern here? Yeah, there are three things mainly. One, most of the uh, exit poll agencies have not said what is their sample size, what is their methodology. And uh, in the sample, what is the representation of different communities? Is the representation uh, reflects their representation in the society or in the electorate? So that is not there at all. So that actually is very much required for not just for transparency, for, for credibility also. Otherwise, how do you know that this survey was conducted real? So this is one. Secondly, the only organization which has uh, put it out in detail is My Access India. You must appreciate them for this. But at the same time, because not just that they have put it out, but that is now available for scrutiny. Now they have said that there are 69 percent male respondents and 31 percent female respondents. So if you just take it like that, it will be a serious problem. But they have mentioned clearly that it is difficult to get female respondents, but the ratio has been extrapolated to 50-50. Here the issue is if it is say 44 and 56 or 45 and 55, then extrapolation is little more better. But with this extrapolation, it will be, the errors will be more. Okay. And the secondly, in the representation itself, they have said that 15% of the respondents have not gone to school. Is it correct if you see what is their representation in the society? No, because see if in a forward or relatively developed state like Karnataka, it is 24% people, they, are, they have not gone to school. And at the all India rate, it will be even more, maybe 26 or 27%. In fact, you forget about the entire electorate, look at uh, the age group between 6 and 17. As recent as 2021, 86.1% of the children in this age group were only in the school. So that is 24% people, 24% uh, youngsters were not in the school. Then what is the situation of say middle aged and old age people? And these are the people who vote more in India. Poor people vote more, rich people vote less. And poor people 
are definitely more illiterate or they have not gone to the school, right? So now you are saying it's only 15 percent. So you have left out 10 percent of the electorate, which is very important electorate, and they are not there in your uh, representation. So this is a serious issue. And uh, the third one is not just about uh, the representation, but they have said that 2 percent women are voting more in favor of uh, BJP and NDA. It could be possible because in highly populated North Indian states, women are voting more in favor of BJP. But in states like Karnataka, where <coughs> uh, women are voting more in favor of Congress, in fact, 12 percent women, women, more women are voting than men in favor of Congress in Karnataka. This is clear in the repeated surveys, it has been shown. Now that you are saying 55 percent people in Karnataka are voting for BJP JDS alliance and 41 percent for Congress. So if you take both men and women, this is almost impossible. I will come back to uh, the uh, our data later, but this is something which tells you that no, there is something basically wrong with these surveys. And all the surveys put out the same numbers, only my axis gives you more details, but other people do not give you any detail, but the numbers are same or similar. So, this is something which brings suspicion. So, we are challenging this based on our data and of course, from Karnataka viewpoint, we are saying that no, this cannot be, uh, this is not possible at all. This is quite a dense discussion. Let me go back and just summarize these three points and make sure that the audience understands. The first thing we are saying is A, people do not put out their methodology, then how do you go back and check? This should be a transparent method, it should be put out to the audience so that people can know what is the sampling, the method of sampling, so that people can even see what could be the inherent bias in it, right? That is not available, only one of them produce it, that is one part. The one who produces it, there are two parts to it. The men and women sampling is slight is distorted that even if you reweight it, it is unlikely to represent the woman. That is the second concern. The third concern is even more deeper because the people who are poor are being represented less. That is being calculated by using the people who have not gone to the school. They tend to be poorer, they tend to vote more, they also politically tend to vote to India a little more. So that means there is an under-representation of those people. Lastly, the most important part is also the political context with like the poor voting to, towards India is possibility. There is also a possibility that there is a difference between the North and South. Most likely in the South because of some of the leaders who are very popular with the women under and leveraging the welfare program. This is likely that they might be voting. So these are the three concerns which you have. Can we now take this concern a little deeper into saying what could it mean to results? What could it mean to the politics itself? Yeah, definitely. For example, see, even in the methodology, if you are going uh, only by telephonic survey, you are not going face-to-face -face survey, then you are excluding all those who do not have telephone or even all those who uh, cannot handle the phone, even if you make an IVR call. And not that uh, an, an old woman in village can answer all the questions pressing different buttons, right? So, this is impossible. So, these problems will actually reflect in the results that you put out. Like you explained about those, the percentage of people who have not gone to school. So, in India, poor people vote more and if they, in Karnataka, it was very clear that it is not just a caste polarization, it is also a class polarization. Poor people are voting more in favor of Congress and India in Karnataka at least. So, now that it is not there, the 10 percent people are missing. So, basically you have uh, gone to those uh, uh, people who are quite articulate, who can come and speak to um, an unknown um, enumerator outside the polling booth and other people have, they are just missing here. So, this will actually distort the whole exercise. But we have come to know about it since they have put it out, other people have not put it out also. And I do not think that uh, my axis people do not know this. They know it quite well. They are quite good at doing these surveys. Then why, why have you left it out? When you are actually extrapolating the women voters from 31 to 50 and bringing down 69 male representation to 50, why are you, know, why are you not doing it? At least it is not there in the PDF that they have uh, circulated. So, this can actually distort 
the whole no uh, exit one of the uh, examples that uh, where they have gone wrong uh, mr pradeep gupta says in his book uh, how india votes actually that he says why he went wrong in tamil nadu is because uh, the women were underrepresented he himself claims that why he went wrong actually 2016 uh, election uh, with uh, tamil nadu vidhan sabha election and here the same doubt arises here also in karnataka like what is the methodology that is they use what was the sample in karnataka and how they have extrapolated it's like it's almost like karnataka election got over in may 7th and 7th itself it's not the uh, i mean uh, they had ample time also maybe maybe other constraints might be there but then if he had release state by state like uh, what is the representation that kind of thing it would have been much more easy for uh, for us to at least know whether uh, there is some credibility to it transparency of course everybody claim credibility that we have ac- I mean we have accurately predicted uh, 90% time 80% time many other claims that they make but then nobody is infallible that's right yeah scrutiny should be there when uh, when pradeep gupta in his uh, i mean uh, the write up that he has uh, published of, about 2024 election he says that uh, uh, 1.5 billion people cannot be fooled something like that uh, so I, i just want to say like that credibility is the main issue here like the way that they have come uh, exit poll all exit polls have come in the uh, similar manner similar fashion similar vote share similar seats so we uh, at least from the data that is available that is access my india we are seeing some serious uh, uh, flaws so we just want to clear that that's why we are saying we will open up our data the pre poll and the uh, poll that we did during the election and the post poll uh, data we will open up the, those data and we can compare like and we can see like where exactly uh, how it will lead to the 55% vote share that they have said and what we have uh, claimed in our uh, surveys that congress is ahead by 2% in mo- in all these surveys that we have done till now we have spoken about the challenge itself the technical reason and the political mistakes that could happen using this data but we have also been edina team has been doing surveys and that is the comparison which has allowed you to dig deeper and find out what the errors are can we now dig a little deeper into the karnataka subset and say what are the things which you are seeing which seems like a misfit and maybe that was the main reason that a bulb clicked and you went back and said let's look at it deeper can exactly. we go into that a little deeper exactly actually uh, our number could be different and somebody else may have a different methodology and their number could be different right finally everybody will come to know if everything is fair and fair election and counting is done then that is the litmus test but the issue there was that we could we saw that uh, they are giving 55% for bjp jds and 41% for congress then as you said we got into it and then we looked at the methodology then we looked at the representation of different communities so now coming back to what was our number so our number in second survey that we presented edina did two surveys edina did many surveys but we could publish two surveys in the second survey uh, congress had got 46% and bjp jds alliance had got 44% votes so this second survey was put out on 16th of april so but actually because of uh, the rules of election commission you cannot uh, publish any survey um, i mean you What because you of the election survey election commission rules you can publish the pre poll surveys only 48 hours before the first phase of election but not that we stopped there in fact after that we continue to do some surveys but in different parts of karnataka particularly because neha incident happened in hubli and at that time we wanted to know what is the uh, impact of that incident uh, in that part so we conducted surveys in chikodi in uttar kannada and darwad also so here in the, actually in the first between actually between first survey and second survey congress which was actually 12% behind bjp in uttar kannada and darwad had come to close had come 2% closer but after this incident in fact congress did not suffer any setback but in the entire north karnataka there was a wave in favor of congress so everybody has noticed not just the political party leaders but even the journalists and everybody has witnessed this and it was very much evident in our survey also 
So then we did a post poll survey also. So with this post poll survey, we did not uh, put out as, uh, as an exit poll because we have our own views on exit poll that when you get uh, a real election result in the next two or three days, would you have to put out an exit poll? But when uh, this came, we are putting it out. But in the last 10 days, we have conducted a post poll. This is not a typical uh, exit poll that is that happens in front of a polling booth or when people come out after voting. But here in this uh, post poll, we see that whatever percentage gap that was there between BJP and Congress, that is still there and Congress is 2% ahead. So this is clear. So when that is the situation, we have serious doubts about these exit polls that have come out. Here I would like to point out Edina's fundamental model itself has surveys as a mechanism to do uh, media reporting, right? We do constantly surveys, we don't do it just for the election. In fact, the survey mechanism is used to understand the mood of the people and a lot of the news articles actually get generated. So it is not an election exercise, it is an exercise or it's in the DNA of Edina itself. Right? Yes, because we consider that this is a democratic process that when certain section of the population is underrepresented in the so-called mainstream media and not that you just make stories, individual stories like somebody has some problem, this community has a problem but what is the collective expression of those communities even during elections. Okay, Because of this we continuously do surveys and we think that this is part of the electoral process, this is part of the democratic process and it should continue. So, yes, that is part of our DNA. Yes. So, and in that process, you have been doing many surveys. Some has come as pre-poll and that got published. Some have been done because it's a regular media process. And in all this data, you can't find this gap which is being mentioned. And that is why it opened a can of worms and that's how we went on to discuss yeah. here. Right. The other question before I go ahead and ask the political context is that people do come and ask often that why would a a polling institution, an institution which has been making money, has built its reputation on doing exit polls, why would they put up something wrong because it, it could hurt their reputation? What would you say about it? Yes, but um, yes, there are some agencies uh, who are more than 90% correct, but you can see that there are many people who have gone wrong several times, but they're still in the business. This is like asking, uh, in spite of, uh, I mean, the, there are say some 100 films that are being released and 80 to 90 percent films they are flop but still people do make those films. But this credibility issue is serious issue. Pre-poll is a different thing. Pre-poll because you may get money from somebody and you are just putting out numbers in favor of them. But post-poll because the election is already done. But this question has now come because people ha are expressing doubts about the electoral process. Okay, people have gone to election commission, they have written there. In fact, on certain issues, people have even gone to Supreme Court. That is, it is not just about EVM, but on many issues, uh, people are actually going to courts that election is not fair. So now a question has arised that whether exit polls are being weaponized. So that is the serious issue. So of course, this uh, just by circumstantial evidence, you cannot conclude. But um, this, is, this is a question that is there in this country right now. Okay. So we have seen the technical issues, we have seen the political ramification that could happen. There seems to be good reason to doubt it in this particular election where we think po polls and even the exit polls could be weaponized. We have seen organizations which are coming out with programs like Vigilant Voters and Voters Will Must Prevail. In this context and and scenario, it's important to go and challenge. So I would like both of you to actually tell what the challenge is and what is Edina putting out to open open the gates for scrutiny and what are you challenging and what are you putting up? So first we demand all the exit polls to put out what is their sample size, what is their methodology and what is the sample, the representation within the sample and what are the questions that you have asked and what are the answers. Uh, in with the various demographic uh, subsections. This is one. Second, we have put out specific questions to My Access India about the, um, the representation of those who have not gone to school and how you have uh, ensured less error uh, in extrapolating the women voters.
underrepresented women only. underrepresented women's will so these are the uh, questions that we are putting out and of course karnataka is there a specificity for example at all india level you are saying this 2% women are voting more in favor of nda but is there a specificity for karnataka of course they may choose not to answer the third part because um, they they have put out all india figures but other thing it is about the proper representation of a significant chunk of the indian population so this is our challenge and we are here and we are ready to put out our numbers our data and anybody can actually these uh, pollsters can come and see that and we can cross verify of course this will also be a learning but more than that at this point of time we are challenging it because this could actually uh, trouble the 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 will of the political will of the people and this seems to be at the heart of edina itself edina is a community based media house it looks for transparency what it's trying to do is aggregate community voices survey it's is in dna it does not mean it gets it right all the time but it's happy to produce what it's doing the scrutiny would help it learn but here at a juncture when we are going to get an election result very soon what eden is saying is here we are putting out all these things for you have a look at it scrutinize it we will learn but you must also put what is there in your kitty you can't have a black box and you have to answer those questions because you're making some fundamental calculations which doesn't seem to fit the ground reality and not even the reality which the surveys of edina is saying and to that point i would like to congratulate edina being very transparent and i think that's the way we need to progress in both media and in survey that we need to be transparent put the rules of the game so that there is less bias in it any concluding remarks from both of you in this regard no i mean one of the uh, points that uh, in the access my india has put out and to public is winning elections is equivalent to winning hearts of people and it cannot be faked particularly in a country like india with 1.5 billion people and uh, so much demographic uh, geographic diversity and he adds oh, and they add like over and above that is a that to beat a contender like modi the opposition would have to search for a leader who is better than modi whereas like in india where uh, indira gandhi was at her peak there was no opposition but still she was defeated right okay. and like a uh, uh, person like vajpay who was like uh, who did not he was called ajata shatru or in politics who does not have any miss he was at his peak and india shining happened and 2000 uh, what he called uh, 2004 election ha- happened without there any leader which is equivalent of vajpay so like this seems like in that uh, is a, a entire write up of that points uh, it is more biased towards bjp this is a, i mean clearly you can see in that uh, text itself. text text itself yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah this is a challenge and this is also a request because there'll be mutual learning and there la- there has to be transparency in these things especially when we are actually dealing with uh, the uh, electoral process which is at the center of indian democracy so that's it so we are uh, i mean we wish that they'll uh, come out in open and answer these questions and also like uh, like entire questionnaire and all those things related to modi what are people issues what are the voting on all those things there are other contradictions maybe if they accept the challenge and if we can sit maybe we can discuss that very amicably and uh, learn from each other Thank you so much. So Edina is going ahead and challenging an exit poll, asking for the processes and in specific where the data has been provided and especially using the example of Karnataka. So this is a wonderful process because this kind of process allows debates and good debates to happen within within a democratic setup. So thank you so much. Signing off Venkat for Edina. ಮತ್ತಷ್ಟು ವಿಶೇಷ ವಿಡಿಯೋಗಳನ್ನು ನೋಡಲು ಮತ್ತು ಹೊಸ ವಿಡಿಯೋಗಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ತಿಳಿಯಲು ಈ ದಿನ ಡಾಟ್ ಕಾಮ್ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಚಾನೆಲ್ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್